Hi again, everyone. Um, I have set up a little mini dungeon here, as you can see, um, to show off the storm system game mechanic. A uh, lot of you have been asking about it, so let's roll up our sleeves and get, get started. Um, this is a very simple dungeon I've set up here. We've got the Great Hall at this end. Uh, that's our 7x7 seven seven hall, that's the, the biggest room. And we've got two corridors here, each with a couple of spawn points in. Uh, this one's got two spawn points, this one's got one, two, three spawn points. You'll see how they work in a second. Uh, this section here is all one section, it's called the Kitchens. It's a 7x3 um, uh, um, uh, board piece but it's essentially two completely separate uh, three by three rooms. Uh, they're not connected, as you can see, but we are connecting them for this. Our heroes for this are Erin Bloodborne. There's Erin. So that's our elven character, Erin Bloodborne. And here is Ragnar Agathorn, who is our Viking. So I'll keep track of Erin and Ragnar's stats here using one of these, one of these things. Um, and as you can see, we've got health points on this side and action points on the other. Health points we're going to roll for right now for both characters. Um, and then obviously that will stay whatever it is. Hopefully I get a 12 or 11, but let's just see. Um, and none of those. Uh, and uh, here, action points, we're just going to be rolling every start of every turn just to determine how many action points we've got. This is just a really handy way of keeping an eye on your action points. Because although it seems relatively simple, um, you, you, can, you can search up to four times a turn, you can attack up to four times a turn, um, and of course you can move in a variety of different ways as well. Uh, but often they don't happen in blocks. So often you'll search once, You'll search twice and generate a monster that then needs killing, so you might attack it once or twice or three times before it's gone, and then you're back to your third search if you want to take it. So it's just a really good way of keeping an eye on where your action points are going. Okay, so without further ado, um, the first thing we do is uh, to start the game, we roll 1d6 to determine who goes first. Uh, I'm rolling for Erin, she gets a 6. I'm rolling for Ragnar, and he gets a 3, so Erin goes first. Erin's going to roll 2d6 to determine her start health. Eight. So we're going to pop those on there. So Erin's got herself eight health points. Now we're going to roll for Ragnar starting health. And he gets, oh, eight as well. Okay. So let's pop these on here. So it's a bit tricky because I'm working upside down. Um, uh, all my cameras are over there and kind of attached up there. So I'm working everything upside down, but we should be fine. Uh, okay, so, um, action points for Erin. We're about to start the game. The very first go is Erin to roll for action points. How many actions she has? Let's have a look. Four. Not huge, but can do. So, uh, four. What are we going to do with four? Well, I'm going to search, first of all. That's Eremor's bow. That's a ranged weapon. Eremor's bow. There we are. I'll pop that there with Erin's stuff. Uh, second search, a scroll of vitality. This scroll allows you or someone in the same room to gain two health points. You must then return this card to the bottom of the search pile. Well, I'm not going to use that yet, so I'll keep that there with my magic scrolls. Third search, the scroll of death. This is the most powerful magical scroll in the game. This powerful scroll will render any one enemy in the same room dead. You must then return this card to the bottom of the search pile. Uh, we've played a few scenarios where this card's been used to vanquish the Gorgon Queen herself. Should that be allowed? Should that not? I welcome your thoughts. Um, it has worked particularly well, even when it has been um, allowed, because it's a very rare card. There's only two of them in the entire pack, so uh, you're only ever likely to pull one of them out in a single scenario. And if you're dealing with the Gorgon Queen and also a couple of Lycan Hall Walkers, a couple of Queen's Guards... If they don't all come out in order, you're very likely to still be facing some very powerful foes, even if you do save the, um, the Scroll of Death for the most powerful character in the game. Oh, I'm not being... This isn't, this isn't good. Um, uh, this isn't good admin. Uh, I had four action points. I've done one, two, three searches, so I've got one action point left. And with my final search, I'm going to search again. My fourth search. Aha! Wyeth's Chakram. This throwing disc gives you an optional ranged weapon to attack with in your line of sight. It always returns to its owner. Okay, so I've picked up two ranged weapons there. That's not ideal. Um, so I might give one of those two. They both have the same stats. They both attack with one dice. Um, 
have infinite range based on line of sight. So what I might do is give one of those to, um, to Ragnar in a second. Uh, but that is Erin's go. So now it's down to Ragnar. Eight. So Ragnar has eight action points. What's he going to do with his eight? Well, I think, um, I think he can have a search as well. Why not? A scroll of defense. This scroll allows you to roll one extra dice when defending. You must then return this card to the bottom of the search pile. Okay. Um, oh, right delirium. An ethereal voice calls out your name from the shadows. Your vision blurs. Confused and disorientated, your turn ends. So there goes all of Ragnar's action points. And it's now the enemy turn. You'll notice I've spawned some enemies up here. Uh, we have, in order of attack, we have Goblin number five, Skeletal Bowman two, Skeletal Bowman four, Goblin number six, Lycan Hall Walker one, and Queen's Guard number one. And they've already populated that grand hall. So I'll tell you what, I'll, let me put the discard pile on the other side so we don't get confused. Okay, so first of all, Goblin number five, his movement is two. This is Mambo number five, one, two. He's going to drift toward his nearest player character, as is Skeletal Bowman 2, until they can see us. So to get closer, the AI would mean that he's going to take a diagonal here for one of their, move of their three movement points. However, enemies don't have to use their movement if they can attack, and this can now attack. So Skeleton Bowman number 2 is going to attack Ragnar Agathorn. It attacks with two dice, scoring seven. Ragnar defends with two dice, scoring eight. He's fine. He swipes the blade, he swipes the, the arrow from the air. Uh, Skeletal Bowman number four is next. Now, Skeletal Bowman number four, I would say, is equidistant between this op opening and this opening. This opening has a bowman in it. Guess what? We're heading this way. One, two, and that's all it needs of its three, because it can now see Erin Bloodborne. So that bowman is now going to attack Erin Bloodborne with two and score six. Erin's going to defend and score six again. So again, Erin sweeps the blade, uh, sweeps the arrow from, uh, oh, same mistake, sweeps the arrow from the air. Um, okay, so now we're on to goblin number six. Goblin number six only has a movement of two. There's goblin number six, one, two. Uh, Lycan Hallwalker one has a movement of five. Again, reasonably equidistant. But I would say there's a route through this one. Can you see with this gap here? And um, let me just make sure I'm not blocking, clogging that up. So because you can move diagonally into and out of door sections, or indeed lava bridge sections, um, this is the nearest character it can get to. One, two, three, four, five. That's all its movement done. And then the Queen's Guard number one has six left. It's definitely closer to this side of the board than the other. This is it here. So therefore, it's definitely going to go toward Ragnar Agathorn. It doesn't have to use all its movement, but it will get as close as it can. One, two, three, four, and five. It could just as easily have gone there. And if we were playing with a dungeon master, it could have drifted over here or waited here or whatever you wanted to do with it. Okay, so that's the enemy turnover. So we're going to start again with Erin Bloodborne. Uh, Erin has these two bows, so let's roll for action points first. Erin has six action points, okay? So with those six, I think she's probably going to, uh, she's going to um, fire at the Lycan Hall Walker. Uh, it attacks with one, just one dice. And scores a three. The Lycan Hall Walker defends with three dice. I think it's gonna be fine, don't you? In fact, those in the know will realise that it's statistically impossible for it not to be, because the lowest you can roll with a single dice is one, so the lowest it could have rolled with three dice is three. So the Lycan Hall Walker is fine. That's one of Erin's attacks gone. She's down to five action points. So now she's going to go one, two, three. So I'll take those off. One, two, three. And then she's going to use one action point to pass Ragnar Eremor's bow. So Eremor's bow is going here. She has one action point remaining, and with that one action point, she's going to stand back on the lava bridge. Now, in the in the rules, you're not allowed to uh, to 
uh, revisit a square you've already been on unless you're changing board sections. So you can leap up and down a lava bridge over and over if you want to, but what you can't do is run around on the, on the spots in the same run. Okay, uh, so that's Erin's go. So now it's down to Ragnar. He's rolling fraction points. Oh, sorry, Erin. We're down to zero. And Ragnar has 10, 10 action points. What are you gonna do with them, Ragnar? Well, you now have a bow and you're in direct line of sight to a skeletal bowman. So I think the first thing you should do is attack that skeletal bowman. Of course, the very first thing you should do is uh, mark those 10 on here, which I have. So let's go. Um, we are attacking with one dice only. And Eremol's bow scores a big hard six. Uh, the skeletal bowman number two is defending with one dice. So he can survive. And he does. He rolls a six. So um, he survived the first attack. Down to nine action points. So I'm going to attack again. This is his second allowed attack. Scores a three. Skeletal Bowman defends with a one. Difference is two. As you can see, the Skeletal Bowman only has one. Oh, sorry, this is Skeletal Bowman number two. Only has one health point. So it's dead. Off it goes. Its card goes to the bottom of the enemy pile. He moves up. And we remove its standee and live here. There we are. So um, that's two of your 10 action points used, Ragnar, um, and, and also two of your attacks. Now I'd say Ragnar can see that goblin as well, so he's going to go ahead and keep using Eremol's bow for the third attack. Score of four. The goblin's going to defend with one dice and scores a two. So again he takes out the goblin as well. So there we are. The goblin's dead. To the bottom of the enemy pile it goes. The standy lives there, and um, okay, wonderful. So that's three attack, three of four attacks. Um, I'd say I can't see this, uh, but I do have seven action points. So because players can pass through them, pass through each other, I'm going to say one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, leaving me with three. I'm in an enemy free room, so I'm going to search and find the black key. You'll note there's a black lock here and a white lock here. So now you can see what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that uh, here. Okay, um, so that is a search. I have another search. Oh, and I found a small health vial, good. All useful, scroll of defense and a health vial. Um, leaving me with a single action point, so why not have another go at the Lycan Hallwalker, which is using Eremol's bow here. Scores five, the Lycan Hallwalker defends with three dice, and scores much more than five. In fact, twelve. So he's fine, that's all of Ragnar's points finished. You've had a go, you've had a go, it's the enemy go. So, from this end we've got the Skeletal Bowman number four, Cannot pass through other enemies. Uh, Ragnar is definitely the nearest enemy, so that skeleton staying right where it is. Goblin number six has two movement and will try and get as close as it can, which takes it one, two. Alternatively, it could go in the corner. Now we're going to the Lycan Hallwalker, which has a movement of five. So, of course, the Lycan Hallwalker is going to one, two, three, four, five and storm into this corridor. In doing so, the Lycan Hallwalker has stopped me having to populate that corridor with enemies. Now, if there were no enemies in here when I step into it in a moment, which I intend to do, because I've, I've got the black key and I want to put it in the black lock, so I'm going to have to go down one of these corridors. If this was empty, as I stepped on the bridge, I would pause, roll 1d6 and populate that corridor with enemies. Now, as you can see, we've got one, two, three spawn points. So if I roll the one, the top enemy here, would turn over and arrive on number one. If I rolled two, the same, the second enemy would arrive on number two. And if I rolled three, four, or five, that would populate all three. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the Lycan Hall Walkers used all its movement. Nothing to attack, can't reach me. So the only thing that's left is the Queen's Guard that has a movement of six, and it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice that the enemies don't have to spawn new enemies when they enter a, 
um, a spawn point containing section, but if I was a character doing that, then I would. Right, that's the enemy go over. Um, back we go to Erin Bloodborne. What are you going to do, Erin? Well, the first thing she's going to do, like everyone does, is roll for action points. She gets six. So, um, let's have a look. Where's Erin? There's Erin. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. She has enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lycan Hallwalker, but she doesn't then... Oh, let me mark those six. But she doesn't then have any action points left to do anything. So, that sounds like a stupid idea. So, what does the Scroll of Death say? This powerful scroll will render any one enemy in the same room dead. You must then return this card to the bottom of the search pile. Well, that's wonderful because all I need to do then is make it into this room. Now, the rule is that if you're standing on the lava bridge, you are in both rooms. Now, what that does is it stops me searching here while there's an enemy here if I happen to be standing directly on the lava bridge. Of course, while there's an enemy in there, let me just roll through. Okay, so we've got six, so we're going to do one two and pause on the lava bridge okay so one two that leaves me four action points i now count as being in both rooms therefore my effect can be in either of those rooms i'm going to choose this room obviously and i'm going to use another action point takes take me down to three to use the scroll of death and kill the lycan hall walker so just like that one of the most powerful enemies in the game has been vanquished to the ether. Now don't forget that the Scroll of Death is one of the rarest cards you can find in the deck, so I was extremely lucky to have that opportunity. Now I'm in here, I don't need to repopulate it because I'm already in. I'm, I'm already standing in both of these rooms when I killed the Lycan Hallwalker. So I've got three action points remaining. There are no enemies in this section. There are no enemies in that section, so I can search again. So I'm gonna go ahead and search. Aha! You discover an enemy. So although you're allowed four searches, lots of people will say, right, I'll search four times. Well, not necessarily, because now I've just spawned an enemy. That enemy's going to arrive toe-to-toe -to -toe right in front of me, whoever it happens to be. So I've spawned an enemy. It cost me one action point to do so because it was a search, leaving me with two action points, so two attempts to kill it, essentially. And it is... Oh, a harpy. It's quite hard. Okay. So harpy number two now arrives... Let's move all the enemies down. So Harpy number two now arrives here. It has three health points. Let me just hunt down Harpy number two here. There's Harpy number two. So Harpy number two is going to arrive literally right on my toes there. Let me just show you Harpy number two. There they are. Okay, so there she is. Um, so Harpy number two is going to arrive here. Now I have two attempts at destroying this, so I'm just going to have to go for it. So um, I'm going to attack the Harpy with two dice. Oops, one's fallen out. I promise you it was a four, and that's a two. So that's six, and the Harpy defends with two and scores eight. So the first attack did nothing to the Harpy. I have one action point remaining. Five, and the harpy responds with nine. So, not only is the harpy unharmed, there is no gap between Erin and the harpy, meaning that the only way that Ragnar could attack that harpy on my behalf is to make it all the way around here and attack it from behind. Now, what I should have done with my final action point is step back one, because, of course, then Ragnar could move past me and attack it but I didn't and so that it, it is what it is so um, so that's Erin's go over now it's up to Ragnar to do something and the first thing he's going to do of course is roll action points four double two okay, four action points what are you going to do with them well there's not a lot you can do as far as battling enemies etc uh, this guy is on his way, the Queen's Guard. His movement is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the nearest he can get is the corner of that room on his next go. So that's nothing to worry about. Um, if the Harpy happens to kill Erin, because enemies only attack once per turn, I'm going to be fine for at least another turn. So while I'm here with four, I'm going to attempt to search four times. But we know how that went last time for Erin. 
So the first search yields a large health potion. Lovely. That's great. I'll take that. Uh, next. Oh dear. Jock's Madness. Very much like right Delirium. A mysterious cloud of smoke engulfs you. Coughing and choking, you fall to your knees and close your eyes. Confused and disorientated, your turn ends. So there we are. Um, that's all four of those gone. Indeed, remaining three. And it's the enemy turn. So the first enemy is the Skeletal Bowman number four. So where are you? Well, the Skeletal Bowman now can't see us. So all it's going to do is use all its movement to drift towards us. One, two, three. Next, the goblin number six with two movement will do the same. One, two. So you can see this is going to be quite the corridor of death here. Next, the queen's guard. Queen's guard number six. Uh, sorry, six movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. And finally, the harpy, which of course is already toe to toe with Erin. So the harpy is going to attack. And you'll notice it's got the same attack and defense as a standard character has. Two dice for attack, two for defense. So. Here comes the attack from the Harpy on Erin. Five. Erin defends. With two. So the difference is three. So Erin has just lost three health points. Just like that. So she's from eight down to five now. Uh, deserved. I mean, she did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Harpy and then just essentially leave the run. Okay, so, um, so that's good. That's the enemy turnover. It's now down to... Uh, Erin herself. So I think Erin's going to obviously roll for action points and get four, eight. Uh, so with those eight, of course, she's going to attack the harpy first. Let me mark the eight first. Okay, she's just rolled three. <laughs> and the harpy's going to defend. And oh wow, and the harpy rolled three as well. <laughs> so it was a terribly poor attack and a terribly poor defense. But to be fair, Three versus three, no difference. The harpy's fine. So that's one attack. Uh, the second of four allowed attacks. That's more like it, Erin. Eleven. And the harpy's going to defend with... Eight. The difference is three. The harpy has three health points. One, two, three. The harpy has left the building. Well done, Erin. Took some doing, but we got rid of it in the end. So there goes the harpy. Okay, so she's had two attacks. Um, sorry, yeah, she's had two attacks of the eight, leaving her with six action points. Um, so what she's going to do, in actual fact, she's got two attacks left. This room isn't empty, so she's going to do this. One, two. Okay, taking her six down to four. And she's got two attacks left, so she's going to try and attack the Queen's Guard a couple of times. Now the Queen's Guard defends with two dice, although it attacks with three, so we could do with killing it this go, really. So come on, Erin. Three. Where are these threes coming from? Okay, so Erin attacks with three. And yes, and the, the Queen's Guard defends with eight, so that's plenty. So Erin's last attack, although she's got a couple of squares to run away, is eight. And the Queen's Guard defends with eight. Okay, so Erin's got no more attacks left. She's not in an empty room, so she can't search. She's got two action points remaining. She's got enemies up this corridor, and that's a skeletal bowman. So I think she's going to cower behind Ragnar Agathorn. And that is the end of her go. Ragnar's turn. Here we go. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't get near enough there. Does have a ranged weapon for the bow. Also one, two. Yeah, I think Ragnar's going to go one, two. So I can mark the six first. Okay, so there's six action points for Ragnar. They're going to one, two for the movement. Four remaining. And he's going to attack the Queen's Guard. Scores a three again. <laughs> okay, so the first attack is three. The Queen's Guard defends with plenty. Eight. So you're down to uh, three action points and three attacks left. Uh, the next attack is another three. <laughs> okay, and the Queen's Guard defends with 11. I mean, looking at the character, it doesn't seem out of character to defend. So, voraciously. Uh, here we have eight for the third attack. It's a little bit better. And the Queen's Guard defends with seven. So the difference is one. Remove one health point. 
Ragnar has one action point and one attack left, so that's what he's going to do. Oops, I'll have to roll that one again, it fell into my lap. That's, okay, seven. And the Queen's Guard defends with four. Okay, so the difference is three. He's only got two health left, so the Queen's Guard is out of the building too. Fantastic. Absolutely kicking butt in this mini dungeon. Brilliant. You are out of there, pal, and join your pals. There we go. Um, okay, so that's all of the action points done. The final action point of Ragnar uh, did finally get that done. So now it's the enemy turn. Of course, the enemy can see Erin, so the enemy uh, is going to attack with two. And score seven. Erin is going to defend with four. So again, the difference is three. So Erin's been knocked right down to two health points. Okay. Um, the goblin isn't going to move at all because it's stuck behind the skeletal bowman in a corridor. Um, those strategists among you might want to use that during your longer campaigns. Um, so that's it. That's the end of the, of the enemy turn. Back we go to Erin. So Erin is going to roll for action points. And scores 11. That's more like it, Erin. 11. Right. So with those 11... Um, I think she can go piling up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten will put her toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Skeletal Bowman. The Skeletal Bowman only defends with one die, so there's a good chance of killing it. So I'm going to use... She's going to use her last action point to attack the Skeletal Bowman. And scores five. So the Bowman can actually survive if it, if it throws a five or a six with its single dice, let's see. And it scores a five, so it does survive. And again, Erin finds herself blocking any possible uh, helpful um, uh, defense attack from Ragnar, but I know what Ragnar's gonna wanna do now, so we're gonna roll for action points. We get seven, let's mark them off. Seven action points, okay. Well, Ragnar does not want to come this way because the moment he stands here, we're gonna to have to populate these two spawn points with enemies. So he's gonna go this way, he's gonna go the same way. So seven, he's gonna go one. And then he's gonna have a search and hopefully not find an enemy. Ooh, a spider bite. You trigger a trap, roll 1d6 to determine your fate. One, two or three unharmed, four, five or six, lose a health point. Now I don't have a scroll of immunity, because I could use that um, to reverse the effects of a triggered trap, so I'm just gonna have to go for it. So that's the spider bite. We're looking for one, two, or three unharmed. And he rolls a six. So unfortunately, he loses a health point. So eight becomes seven. Okay, uh, I don't think I, I put that down, did I? So we're down to five action points now, but that was his first search. So he is gonna search again. You see, I'm looking for the white key, because I know that Erin's got... In fact, I've, I've got the black key, and we're looking for the white key. Both characters can have it, that's fine. Uh, but I've spawned an enemy, and this enemy is... Oh, skeleton number four. Now, skeletons are a little harder than the bowman equivalent, I guess because of their big swords. Let's see if it's two. Okay, skeleton number four. There he is. Now, skeleton number four has just appeared all up in my grill. So um, that's, I've had two searches. I haven't attacked at all yet. Um, so I'm gonna pop that down to four. That's my, that was my last search. So now I'm going to attack the skeleton. Wow, that's awesome, 11. It's gonna to have to do pretty well to survive that. The skeleton only defends with one. So the maximum the skeleton can get is six. So if you roll a, um, if you roll a seven, it's a successful attack, but the skeleton survives. But I just rolled an 11, so I absolutely powdered him to dust. So, sayonara, skeleton number four. We hardly knew thee. There we are. Okay, that's great. So that was my attack. So now I've got three, three action points left. I've had, um, was it three searches or two searches? A spider bite. Um, that's right, a, a spider bite. Um, an enemy, so I've had two searches, so I've got two uh, two possible searches left, so let's try. The white key, awesome, okay, lovely. So we've got both keys for the for the uh, win condition now, that's great. 
Um, I have one search remaining. Should I take it or should I just use those two action points to get a little clue? I'm, I'm going to use them to do this. One, two. So now we are racing for the finish. Okay, enemy's turn now. It's going to be the skeletal bowman attacking. It's going to attack with two dice. And of course it's attacking Erin because Erin's right in front of it. And it scores six. Erin defends with seven. So narrowly escaped, but that's fine. Goblin can't do anything because it's blocked in. Back to Erin. So Erin's going to roll for action points and score nine. Okay, so obviously of those nine, we're going to start off with a few attacks, but let's just pop them on there. So we've got, so we know what we've got, nine. Uh, first attack on the Skeletal Bowman, five. Skeletal Bowman defends with one dice and scores one. So the Skeletal Bowman is out of there. Lovely. There we are, uh, Skeletal Bowman, Sayonara. Okay, um, let me uh, get down to eight, that's the attack. Uh, I'll move it down to seven to get one square closer. And then I will attack the goblin. I'm attacking the goblin with six. So even though the goblin only defends with one dice, it can survive. Come on, goblin number six. No, gets a two. So the goblin's out of there. We are officially in an enemy free dungeon for now. That was that attack. So I've got six left. So what I'm going to do is, once I've popped him back in his grave, um, is I'm going to use one, two to move into the Grand Hall, leaving me the four action points. And I'm going to populate this now with enemies. You can see it has one, two, three, four, five, six spawn points. So I'm going to roll a single d6 to determine how many and where they spawn. And I've rolled a three. And it's as simple as this. One, Two, oh God, <laughs> three. So the first enemy is Harpy number four. So Harpy number four goes on spawn point number one. Let's give Harpy number four its three health points. <laughs> the second enemy I spawned was Lycan Hallwalker number two. Scary fellow indeed, and he's spawning scarily close to me. Um, so he gets five health points. Do -do. Do -do -do -do. Lovely. Not so lovely, actually, it's scary. Um, and uh, Skeletal Bowman, number one. So where are the Skeletal Bowman? There they are. Well, there he is, and he's going to go on spawn point number three. So I would say, quite obviously, he can already see Erin. So um, Erin's got a, got a large health vial here, um, and that's going to add three points of health. So with one of her remaining action points, I'm down to three, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to give her an extra uh, one, two, three health. I fear we may need them. Okay, you'll notice there's no death counters on this. Essentially, we're playing with the last lives in this dungeon for these two characters. So if anyone does die, they die. That's it. Um, okay, so she's got three action points remaining. She has to use them um, if she can. And looking here, I can go one, two, and attack the Lycan Hallwalker. And like an idiot, that's exactly what I'm going to do. One, two, and attack the Lycan Hallwalker. Here we go. Five. Rubbish. Lycan Hallwalker defends with three and easily defends it with nine. Okay, so that's Erin to go. Now it's time for Ragnar Agathorn to roll for his action points and he gets ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's just going to put him in the same room. So what Ragnar's going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. So he had ten. Two, three. Six, leaving him with four. Um, and then he's going to search and find a gold ring for later trading, perhaps. He's going to search. Oh, sorry. Three left. He's going to search again and find Bilton's brew. That's essentially a health potion. Um, Gonna search again. Oh no! You trigger a trap. 
This trap is the uh, Swinging Blade Trap. Same as before, roll 1d6 to determine your fate. 1, 2 or 3, you're unharmed. 3, 4 or 5, you lose a health point. 3, hooray. Okay, so I'm unharmed. I managed to duck it. Good stuff. Um, so I believe I have one search remaining, and that's precisely what I'll do. And that search is the golden brooch. Wonderful. So that's a 50 gold piece worth of shiny, shiny brooch that will help you in dungeon number two. Should you be so lucky to make it there? Right, so that's the end of that. Now it's the uh, now it's the bad guy's turn. So we've got the harpy. It moves five. Um, I would say Erin is definitely its closest character. One, two, three, four is all it's going to need. And it's going to attack Erin diagonally. There's no penalty for diagonal attacks. Um, so she's going to go ahead and attack full power. Two dice. She attacks Erin. And scores eight. Erin defends. And scores seven. Okay, so it's definitely taken taken its toll on poor Erin. Uh, right, after that comes the Lycan Hallwalker. The Lycan Hallwalker is going to attack Erin, obviously, right next to Erin, um, with three dice this time. Oh, she's quite lucky. Four, five, six, seven. So she's going to defend with two dice. And scores 12, the hard 12. There it is, the rare hard 12. Ta -da! So uh, she's absolutely fine and unharmed, which I'm sure she's very happy about. However, um, because this cowardly Viking here held back and sort of hiding around this corner, um, this bowman can only see Erin. So Erin's going to take yet another attack from a skeletal bowman who scores, oh God, 11, 11. This could be the end for Erin here. Oh dear. Erin, good knowing you. Erin scores. Oh, another 12! Another 12, look at that! Oh, the dice don't lie. Look at that, that's awesome! Okay, so she survives. She survives a hell of an onslaught. Well done, Erin. Oh, you legend. Okay, so, um, that's, uh, uh, that's that's the that's the monster turn done. Sorry, I, I just forgot to put these back to zero. Now that's the monster turn done. So now we're back to Erin. So what is Erin going to do? Well, I think what Erin ought to do, obviously, let's find out what she can do. Rolling for action points, and she's rolled eight. That's wonderful. Okay, so she's got eight action points. There's eight action points, and the first thing she's going to do is use the scroll of vitality. This scroll allows you or someone in the same room to gain two health points. You must then return this card to the bottom of the search bar. You or someone in the same room. Well, it's going to be me as Erin. So action points go down one, and her health goes up by oops, goes up by two. So she's on six health now. After surviving a hell of an onslaught, they're very proud of her. Okay, so she's got seven action points remaining. I think she has to have a go at the Lycan Hallwalker because it's there. Oops. Dropped another one. That's a one and a five, a six. Lycan Hall Walker defends with three and gets much more than six. <laughs> a twelve, in fact. Okay, so uh, that's the first attack gone. She's got three attacks remaining. So, yes, yeah, she's going to attack the Hall Walker again. This time with seven. The Hall Walker defends successfully with eight. So, second attack. Um, she's going to attack again, Lycan Hall Walker. This time with 11, that's more like it, Erin. And the whole walker defends with, it's a four there, and a 12 there, oh no. So it successfully defended again, even though it was a really good throw. Uh, so one attack remaining. 11 again, do you see? 11, fantastic. Okay, so, like and whole walker defends. With... Oh, it's done it again, 12. Okay, so that's all of her attacks. So we've got three movement left, um, and we're gonna go one, two, three, and run away. And that is Erin's go. Uh, now it's Ragnar's go, so we're gonna roll for action points, and he gets 10, 10 action points, okay. Do -do -do. 10 action points. So what are you gonna do, Ragnar? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is one, two, three, Four, you don't need to repopulate the room because there's enemies in it now. Five, six, seven, eight. So he's got two action points remaining. In fact, instead of 
seven, eight. We're going to go seven, eight. Okay. So he's got two action points remaining. <laughs> he's going to place the white key. Oops. He's going to place the white key in the white lock. Fulfilling half of the win condition for this dungeon. And with his last action point, he's going to attack this skeletal bowman. Who defends with one d6 and has one health point. So if I get seven or more with these two dice, he's dead. And I got five. So he can survive. I'm going to roll one d6 and get six. He survives. Okay. So that's your action points down to zero. It's now the enemy turn. And interestingly, the Harpy is one, two squares away from Ragnar or one, two, three squares away from Erin. So the Harpy is going to do one, two and attack Ragnar. I'm going to attack with two dice and score eight. Ragnar is going to defend. He has a scroll of defense, actually. It doesn't cost action points to use. And it gives you an extra dice in defense, but I'm not going to use it this time. So I'm defending against an eight. And scores an eight. Brilliant. There we are. So uh, he's fine. That's good. Uh, so that's the Harpy. Here comes the Lycan Hallwalker. Now, a uh, Lycan Hallwalker to get to Ragnar would be one, two, three for an attack. Or one, two, three and for an attack. So he's going to attack Erin. One, two, three three for an attack. There we are. So here comes the Lycan Hall Walker. He attacks with three dice. And his attack is very weak indeed. Uh, five, less than a single dice max. So that's, I'm reasonably confident Erin's going to be fine. She defends with two. And she does indeed defend and get eight. So that's wonderful. So the only thing left is the skeletal bowman. Although, okay, if the uh, Lycan Hall Walker wasn't there, I'd argue that you probably probably could see Erin, but it's right next to Ragnar, so that too it's going to attack. It attacks with two dice and scores eight. Ragnar defends with... Um, I've got to be a little bit careful here. I've only got seven health, but no, that's fine. Attacking with eight. Oops, that's a one and that's a six. See, that is a one. So that's seven, so Ragnar loses one health point. So the seven becomes a six. But we're okay. So that's the enemy turn. Back we go to Erin. So Erin's going to roll for action points. Oops, that's a one, that's a six. So that's seven action points. Um, I'll just mark those up. Okay, so um, first thing she's going to do, obviously, is attack the Lycan Hallwalker. Then attacks with eight. The Hallwalker defends with 11. One attack. Second attack, Lycan Hallwalker. 10, like an Hallwalker defends with. Yeah. 14. Third attack, like an Hallwalker. <laughs> Four. I have a feeling the Lycan Hallwalker is going to be fine. And indeed, it's very fine. Uh, uh, 12. And final attack, like an Hallwalker. Four, again, rubbish. And uh, the Lycan Hall Walker defends with eight, so it's fine. Three squares left, got to use them. Can't go through the Lycan Hall Walker. It's standing on the lava bridge, which means it's in both rooms, so I can't search here. So the only thing I can do with three action points is one, two, three, which realistically, when faced with the Lycan Hall Walker, I think I'd probably do as well. Back to zero. Now it's down to Ragnar Agathorn. Now Ragnar Agathorn has a chance here of completing the win condition for the dungeon. He's put the white key in, he's sitting on the black key, so he wouldn't necessarily risk combat. So let's just see how many action points he gets. So you're gonna roll 2d6, and he gets 10, which is plenty to finish the dungeon. So he's gonna have a go at attacking. There's no counter-attack mechanic, so he's gonna have he's gonna attack the um, he's gonna attack the harpy in front of him with two dice and score 10. The Harpy's going to, going to defend. Oh, sorry, let me put these in. 10, just attacked, scored 10. The Harpy's defending against 10 and gets 5. The Harpy is destroyed. Off goes the Harpy. Can I empty the dungeon before winning? I think that would be more stupid than brave at this stage because it would mean I'd have to go for the Lycan Hallwalker. Okay, um, uh, now I'm going to attack the Bowman. 
So I'll just pop the action there again. Attacking the Bowman with two. Uh, that's nine. The Bowman only defends with one dice, a maximum of six. So the Bowman, instant kill again. Off goes the Bowman, off to the ether. Now, let's have a look. I've got eight left. One, two, three, four. Attack. Five. Attack. Six. And then seven, eight. No, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk it. So um, I've got eight left. So I'm simply going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Leaving me with a single action point. And then with the eighth, I'm going to place the black key into the black lock, thereby completing this little mini dungeon. Well, I hope you liked that and enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we've had uh, giving and taking at the start with a bit of uh, um, with a bit of uh, trading. Uh, we've had use of scrolls and uh, and uh, and ranged weapons and um, uh, and and uh, and health vials, uh, give take use, uh, fight, search and move. Well, I think I mean we've searched for both keys and found them. Uh, we've fought our way through many hordes, uh, and although it's not looking good for Erin, who stuck behind a corridor behind a lichen hall walker, the win condition for this particular dungeon isn't that it's a totally empty dungeon. So that's it. It's all over. Um, the characters are victorious and will move their way on to the next level of the dungeon, if indeed you so choose to have that as your house rules. So uh, we'll leave the video at that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, that, that's this, this one's dedicated to, um, to my friend Grant. Uh, everyone knows him as Cow, uh, who specifically asked about the storm system and how it works and kind of would be very interested in seeing it working. So I hope that was cool for you, buddy. I hope uh, that's opened everyone's eyes to how the, uh, how the mechanic itself works and how much fun it could be in a big dungeon, like, for example, the six big dungeons that the Gorgon's Lock is going to be released with. The at least six dungeons, of course. Those who have visited my previous Kickstarters will know I am the Global Upgrade King. So let's see what we can do for you guys as the project progresses. Uh, okay, thanks very much for that, guys. Cheers, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, well done, Ragnar. Uh, good luck, Erin. And, um, yeah, and I'll see you in future updates. Thank you. Bye.